Hi, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex FX, and today we're talking about the five main causes of tone suck on your pedal board and how you can get rid of it. So let's define, what is tone suck? When you hear somebody say, man, this is a real tone sucker, it sounds like there's a blanket over my amp, or it sounds like my tone is just thin and anemic when I'm running through my pedals or I'm running through my pedal board. I think it's some combination of one, having the wrong type of signal conditioning, meaning either too many poor buffers or inadequate amount of buffers. You have higher capacitance cable and the combination of the buffering that's there is not sufficient to drive those lines. And it could also be a result of the type of bypass that the pedals have that's nor true bypass or buffered bypass. And it's leaving some parts of the circuit in the signal path, even when it's off, that's creating some sort of parallel load in combination with the capacitance of the cable in the input of these particular devices. But let's get into that a little bit deeper, taking a deep dive into exactly what are the top five things that really do cause tone suck. One of the most easy ways to eliminate tone suck is actually fairly simple. Now, most of us out there are using volume pedals. And for the most part, most of the most common volume pedals out there are passive. That means that they don't have any sort of conditioning or buffering, they don't require any power. These would be things like the Ernie Ball volume pedals, the Boss volume pedals. Most of the common volume pedals that are out there do not have any sort of power whatsoever. They're typically somewhere between 25K and 250K on the potentiometer. And those are in series with everything else that you have on your rig. And those can be really problematic because not only do you have a 250K pot generally in a Strat, let's say, or a 500K in a Gibson, then you have another pot in series with that on the board. If there isn't the proper signal conditioning, meaning the proper buffering, that's automatically going to roll off some tone. It's going to create a little bit more of a darkness to the sound. And even though you have the benefit of being able to control the volume, there is a consequence to that. And we can hear that pretty much universally reported when people put a volume pedal in a true bypass loop, they bring it in and out and they don't have the proper signal conditioning. They're gonna notice some tone suck. We can even show that in one of our recent videos where we put an Ernie Ball volume pedal into the buffered environment of our Vertex Boost and then take it out, you can hear the difference. Just check that out. Now back to the volume pedal connected through the Vertex Boost. I think you can hear there that the differences are pretty drastic. And although this is exaggerated because this is a 25K pot in this particular volume pedal, even a 250K will produce some semblance of what you just heard. But another thing that happens with volume pedals that a lot of people don't understand and often discount is they put their tuners in the tuner out of a passive volume pedal. And this creates what's called a parallel load. And this further diminishes the quality of your tone because not only do you have the volume pot that you're running through, you have another load in parallel with it by just sending that output to the input of a tuner and it's just floating out there. It's not helping anything at all. It's actually diminishing the tone and in most cases your tuner would probably be better off, especially if it's true bypass, just in series with every other pedal instead of putting it in the tuner out. So I do recommend that if you do want to use a passive volume pedal, you do have some high quality signal conditioning using an input and an output buffer like I talk about often in these videos or getting an active volume pedal and a great one that I really love is made by Laylee or you can get something like our Vertex Boost, which takes any volume or expression pedal and turns it into an active volume or expression. So it doesn't suck any tone, doesn't matter the impedance, doesn't matter which volume pedal, which brand, whatever it is, it's gonna react identically to the sound of your guitar plugged directly into your amp, even though you're running through a volume pedal. So that is volume pedals is our first culprit for tone suck and using that tuner out in combination with the volume pedal. That is something that you wanna avoid that is definitely a tone sucker. A second component of tone suck is having too many true bypass pedals and not enough buffering going on. Now in our industry, we do talk about true bypass as kind of being one of the more boutique bypasses that kind of came into fashion in the 90s with full tone. But there is a consequence of having too many true bypass pedals because in essence, what it's doing is it's just extending the length of your input cable. And by the input cable, I mean the cable that goes from the guitar into the pedal board. 
Now, if you just have all true bypass pedals between the input and output, that's in essence just adding to the length of the cable that you already have coming out of the guitar, assuming that all the pedals are off. You have all the interconnections between all the pedals, plus any of the capacitance or resistance that's inside the actual pedal itself, because you still have to wire the input jack to the switch to the output jack in order to get signal through it. So this is all adding up to having a longer cable without any signal conditioning. And if you see one of our videos about whether True Bypass is the best bypass, you'll see that we actually recommend that you use True Bypass pedals but have really high quality buffers on the input and output so that you're not using any of these devices to have to drive any long cables. And if you have them all off, you're at least having the high quality benefit of an input buffer and an output buffer to control the pickup loading and on the output to drive long lines back to the amplifier. So having all true bypass pedals can actually create quite a bit of tone suck because you get all that capacitive roll off. You have that long cable effect where it's taking off your high end, it's muddying your dynamics, and it's certainly not a good solution if your goal is to have the purest tone, the same tone as your guitar, say plugged into your amplifier with only a 10 foot cable. I think a really easy example of this to check out is we recently did a cable shootout where we took 30 feet of a bunch of different brands of cables. We used them where we just had the guitar driving them by itself, and then we put a buffer in front of them to see how it changed and transformed the tone. Let's check that out so you can really hear what this sounds like in the right application, in the actual environment of a pedal board based system. Off. Let's bypass the whole thing. Go back to the Vertex Boost. That was pretty easy to see. When the buffer was off, it sounded pretty muddy. As soon as the buffer came in, it was appreciably better, brought back all that high end, and didn't have that tone suck. And this is what having a high quality buffer will do for you if you have all true bypass pedals, using something like I recommend, and you can see our descriptions for all the different recommended buffers that we have. You can use that to bring back all that tone and liven everything up. But this is in contrast to the flip side, the third cause of tone suck, which is too many buffers. Now having too many buffers can be just as consequential to sucking out tone as not having enough of them. The problem with having too many buffers, especially lower quality buffers, these are the BJT buffers that we see in a lot of the most common pedals out there, is that firstly, a BJT buffer in and of itself can never fully get back to Unity Game. This is a huge problem in that you can never get exactly on the output what goes in on the input. It's gonna lose a little bit of level for each one that you run through. In addition to that, the lower quality ones also add noise. So not only are you getting some attenuation, you're also getting the noise floor raised. It's also changing the EQ because a lot of these BJT buffers with a 1K output impedance are not stable at driving long lines. In a really excellent video that I've seen recently shows Brian Wampler going through a white paper that Jack Orman had written where he compares four true bypass pedals versus four buffered pedals in series and looks at what it does to the signal. If you look at the four buffered pedals, you can see that you're getting quite a bit of EQ change, you're getting an attenuation, you're getting a noise floor increase, and that's not the same as the transparency that you would get ordinarily if you had a high quality buffer or you were using mostly true bypass pedals. Because if you compare his same model in true bypass, you maybe see a little bit of roll off. You don't see the extreme EQ change. You don't see a reduction in level to the degree that you see with four of the BJT buffers in series. So this really illustrates that if you're using too many buffers and you're not using high quality buffers, it can be just as damaging as not having enough of them. So really finding that middle ground, and I recommend having as many true bypass pedals as possible, having a high quality buffer first and a high quality buffer last to have the optimum tone so that you're removing as much tone suck as possible from your rig. That brings us to number four of our tone suck culprits. It is none other than high capacitance cables. And when I say high capacitance cables, basically what this means, if we're kind of dissecting the word capacitance, the word capacitor is kind of part of the root of that. 
And in, in essence, what it's doing is it's like you're taking your tone knob on your guitar and you're rolling it down the longer the cable is and the higher capacitance that the cable is. So you could presumably have a cable that's 40 feet long that maybe is 20 picofarads per foot, and you could have another cable that's the same length and has 40 picofarads per foot and would sound slightly different because they would have different capacitances. Now, those are pretty decent numbers as far as cables are concerned, but there are some that I've measured that are incredibly high. Some as high as 80, 90, 100 picofarads per foot. Now, this isn't the only measure that tells you whether a cable is good or not. In fact, if you look at our instrument cable shootout, you'll see that a lot of players on the input cable actually preferred something that had a little bit higher capacitance than that, in the hundreds almost. But once you're on the pedal board, you ideally want to go as low capacitance as possible with the highest quality buffers you can. The higher the quality of the buffer, the lower the capacitance of the cable, the less tone suck susceptibility there's going to be. I really recommend looking for a patch cable that's somewhere between maybe 20 and 35 picofarads per foot and using as high quality buffers as you can on the input and output preferably one meg on the input impedance of the buffer and 100 ohms on the output impedance of the buffer. And if you wanna know which ones we recommend, you can always check out our description. We list several high quality buffers there, in addition to high quality patch cables and even the ones that we actually make ourselves that you can check out on the rigdr.com. Now is using high capacitance cables gonna completely wreck your tone? Again, it really depends on where. If it's the input cable and you like to have a little bit of roll off, I think that that's probably okay. But wiring your entire rig with it, not using any high quality buffers, maybe just relying on the buffers that are in some of the pedals that you already have, is not a recipe for success. So again, I highly recommend that you check out those specs that I recommended and really think about that when you're deciding which cable to use and which is gonna be optimal to minimize the tone suck as a result of your cabling that you're using on the rig itself. Now the last thing, the fifth thing that is a culprit of tone suck is the type of bypass that's not really true bypass and not really buffered bypass. It's sort of this intermediary that's really consistent of older vintage pedals. Things like old MXR pedals, like old vintage WAS. These are examples of pedals that still leave some remnants of their circuitry in the signal path even when they're off, but aren't doing any sort of signal conditioning or have any sort of active buffer that's driving that on the output. This is typically where they're leaving capacitor or resistor values out there. A lot of times that capacitance is in parallel with the guitar cable that's coming into it, and it can create a real problem. On a lot of these that I've measured, there's somewhere between 400 and 500K in parallel with the input, which is a problem. That's creating that same sort of parallel loading that we talked about with the volume pedal, and is definitely not something that you want if you wanna optimize for tone. But a lot of this bypass system was a consequence of the time. Back when a lot of these old vintage MXR pedals or old vintage WAS were made, there weren't a lot of different foot switches available for them. The only foot switch for a lot of these was a single pole double throw foot switch, and they couldn't do a true bypass at that time, nor was it something that people really cared about. A lot of these devices were just used in series in one particular application, maybe in a studio, maybe for a session, and they would plug in that one pedal, they would have it on, and there wasn't really a thought that there would be multiple of them in series and that you'd have all this extra loading going on because you'd have all this capacitance in parallel on the input of every single one of these. That just wasn't a thought that they had back then. But now that we're using them in the fashion that we do now on pedal boards, this becomes catastrophic to the tone. And as somebody that's a vintage pedal lover like me, this can be really frustrating unless I'm putting it in some sort of true bypass looper or switcher, they can really be devastating. So let's look at some solutions for these five main culprits for tone suck. When talking about volume pedals, there's a couple of easy ways to solve it. As I mentioned a little bit earlier when we were talking about the volume pedals, you could of course use the Vertex Boost. That will take any passive volume pedal and turn it into an active one. You could also buy a buffer and install it in your current passive volume pedals. A good one that's made by somebody that we really like is Creation Audio Lab over in Nashville, Tennessee. They create retrofit buffers that you can install in your actual volume pedal. Those are easy ways to combat that problem. Additionally, if you put a buffer before the volume pedal, that'll also really help with it and will convert it to low impedance. Now, if you're using a high quality buffer that has a low output impedance like we recommend, you would wanna go lower in the impedance of the volume pedal if possible. So if you have a 250K volume pedal, you might wanna go to one that's 25K. 
but if you still have a 250k one it's not going to be the end of the world just the lower impedance you go typically the better that it'll match up with that low impedance of the buffer and the less tone suck susceptibility that you'll have when talking about buffers there actually is a really cool buffer kit that's made by my buddy roy over at greenhouse and he created a relay true bypass system that can fit inside of the battery compartment of a lot of these typical bjt style pedals that have poor quality buffers like the boss and the ibanez stuff Basically, you just retrofit this thing inside of your existing pedal and it switches it over to True Bypass. It's a really cool kit and it only costs 12 bucks. Very easy to install. And in fact, I might even buy a few and give you a tutorial on how you can convert your existing pedals to True Bypass that aren't, that might be big tone suckers. And if you're in that case where you have too many True Bypass pedals in series, you should definitely check out either our recommendations or our DIY buffer assembly that we showed a video on exactly how to assemble it all different sorts of wiring diagrams so you can literally customize this thing to your rig exactly the way that you want it and if you have some of those vintage pedals like i talked about like old mxrs or old wah pedals i saw two really cool articles one by stinkfoot and one by dandy job that shows how to actually modify these to a current version of true bypass so that they don't suck out any of the tone it just requires that you change the foot switch you can even add an led if you want and they give really great instructions on exactly how to do that i'm going to link those in the description so that if you want to go find those you can make those modifications you can make those changes to those types of pedals so that you're not getting any of the consequence of the tone suck by leaving in some of that capacitance in parallel with the guitar cable coming into the input you definitely don't want that if you can help it now of course another easy way to eliminate these problems is to use a true bypass looper assuming that you have good quality input and output buffers that's going to essentially turn any pedal that's true bypass or not into a true bypass loop because you have that foot switch that's engaging the pedal on and off or you could use a programmable switcher. Some of the ones that we really love and talk about all the time here on the channel are from RJM. They have selectable buffers that you can put on the input and output and you can program them to be in or out depending on the patch that you have. That's another easy solution. If you don't wanna mess with these mods and you just want an external piece of hardware that's gonna do all of the buffering and the switching for you. With regard to the high capacitance cables, as I mentioned, you can always go to our website and get some cables that are made by us. Equally, we have the same tutorials on how to make the cables that we actually sell that you can make yourself with the exact same materials, exact same plugs, exact same cable. So you can check that out. We have links for that in the description as well if you wanna make your own or if you wanna buy ours. This is gonna make sure you have the highest quality, lowest capacitance cable for the rig, easy to assemble, easy to maneuver in tight spaces. And it's gonna make your rig sound a heck of a lot better if you have some high capacitance cables that are on there now. So to wrap up, we learned about the five primary reasons for tone suck. We talked about volume pedals, using the tuner out as being a problem for tone suck, creating that parallel load having another pot in series with the guitar volume pot. Just not a good recipe for good tone. We talked about having too many true bypass pedals as being a tone sucker, having too many buffers as being a tone sucker. We talked about high capacitance cables as being tone suckers. And we talked about having sort of this intermediary vintage style bypass where it wasn't true bypass, nor was it buffered bypass, but was leaving remnants of the circuit in parallel loading that guitar cable coming in in parallel often as high as 500k on some that i've measured definitely not a recipe for good tone but we gave you some great solutions ways to work around it and all the stuff that we talked about today is going to be linked in the description so do check that out if you're wondering how to combat this and you want to implement some of our recommendations and as always if you like what you saw today if you found it helpful i invite you to like to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and leave us a comment if there's some other tone suck things that we didn't talk about that are big culprits that you've found that if you deal with them properly, that they can really help revive your rig, making it toneful, making it sound hi-fi, clean and clear, just as though you plugged in your guitar into your amplifier with a 10-foot cable. If you'd like to support the channel even further, I highly recommend that you check out our website, therigdr.com. We offer consulting services so that we can help you build the rig of your dreams. We also offer all of our Velcro, tie-down mounts, cable ties, custom-made cables, all to your desired length and size that you can buy right from the website. You can also head to the Vertex FX website where we sell things like the Vertex Boost, which we talked about, and a bunch of other pedals, in addition to our pedal boards that you can buy right there from the website. That all helps us greatly and really helps us support this channel so that we can continue to push out this great content. 
Thank you again for watching. Until next time, I'm Mason Marangella, aka The Rig Doctor from Vertex Effects. See you later.